Hey math friends, I'm Brittany Heggie, the math obsessed educator behind Mix and Math. And today we are really going to dive into using numberless word problems in fourth and fifth grade. So I would consider myself a pretty patient person, but if there is one thing that really gets under my skin, it is having to repeat myself multiple times, which is pretty funny because I have a three-year-old, almost four-year-old, and I feel like I spend all day and all night repeating myself. But when it comes to teaching math, I don't know how many times I have told students, read the problem. <laughs> Do not pluck the numbers out and start operating because you're really doing work that you don't even know is correct. Why would we do this work when we don't even know what the problem's asking us to do? So we call these students number pluckers because they pluck out the numbers, they randomly choose an operation symbol, and they start solving the problem. I really do not think that I could stand to see another student plucking out numbers, and so I had to find a solution. And that is when numberless word problems just kind of fell into my lap. So before we dive into what numberless word problems are and some actionable ways that you can use these in your class, I want you to know to stick around until the end because I actually have a free numberless word problem activity for you that I really want you to be able to grab. So stick with me until the end and I will get you that link. So what is a numberless word problem? I wish that I could give you some fancy educated definition of what this is, but a numberless word problem is really just a word problem without numbers, that's it. So that means you have access to a ton of numberless word problems because all you have to do is take the numbers out of your word problem and you've got a numberless word problem. For me, I was always very dramatic and took my black Sharpie marker and crossed out all the numbers in the problems so that way students can see the numbers and we had a numberless word problem. So I'm not sure who initially came up with this idea to take the numbers out of a word problem, probably a frustrated teacher or many frustrated math teachers like myself, but the reason these are used are typically to get students to focus on the meaning behind the operation or the actions in the problem. And they're typically used in lower grades for that reason. So a student can learn what addition is without getting distracted by the numbers. There's this whole process for how you can introduce it in lower grades, but I actually found a lot of value using numberless word problems with students in upper elementary as well. And here's why. One, we know that students don't come to us always knowing the meaning behind the operations, especially when we look at like division and the fact that there are two different actions that can lead to a division problem. And so I find that students don't always know the meaning behind. A teacher on Instagram reached out to me and she said, I feel like my students only know division as the opposite of multiplication. They don't actually know what division means and looks like. So for that reason, numberless word problems are fantastic for students in upper grades. The other reason I really like to use numberless word problems with students in upper elementary is because it shifts the focus from solving to understanding. Students are so quick to want to solve a problem, but not as quick to spend time working to understand the problem, which we know is a vital step to solving the problem correctly. So numberless word problems found a pretty regular place in my lesson plans because they really are just such a useful and easy tool. So I wanna share with you three ways that you can use numberless word problems in your classroom. And then I also wanna leave you with a quick differentiation tip as well. So the first way that I used numberless word problems in my classroom was when we were specifically focusing on the problem solving process. When I felt like students' problem solving habits were starting to slack a little bit and they just weren't following the type of thinking that I wanted them to have, we would go back and we would say, okay, let's look at the problem solving process, but let's do it without those numbers in the problems. And so that really allowed them to focus on the steps that they were kind of skipping over, which 99% of the time was the step of understanding the problem. And so we would go through our problem solving process and talk about problem solving with those numberless word problems. So that was just kind of a very quick, generic way to use them. The second way that I love to use numberless word problems was with think alouds. And I especially love to do this with multi-step word problems. And here's why. You put a problem up on the board, kind of like a number talk. You have students gather in, and instead of a 
mental math problem. You put this word problem on the board without any numbers in it. And students start to think about what steps they would take. How would they act this out? Now, they're not having to focus on any numbers. They're not having to focus on actually solving the problem. They're just thinking through the process. They're thinking through, if I were in this situation, what would I do? What steps would I take first? Then what happens next? And so giving students an opportunity to either, one, listen to my thinking as I'm approaching this problem or listening to the thinking of other students is so powerful. So bringing those numberless word problems into our think alouds was just so effective. Another way that I use numberless word problems with my students in fourth and fifth grade is doing a word problem sort. Now I love math sorts. There are so many different ways that you can use them. But in this situation, I would have students sort them based on the operations. And this may sound like something you would do in lower grades and it actually is a really good idea to do this with students in lower grades. But I find that in upper elementary, students are still struggling with this. And so taking time to do a sort based on the operation can be really helpful for students. After you've given students the word problems, they've sorted them into the four operations, you can have discussions as a class about what the commonalities are between each of the problems. So if we're looking at addition problems, we can see that all of these problems are doing some type of combining or joining, which it's important for students to understand this because when they start adding and subtracting fractions or adding and subtracting decimals, the meaning of the operation does not change. They are still doing the same action. And so having discussions around the action behind addition and the action behind subtraction is really, really valuable and will pay off when you begin modeling these same operations with different types of numbers. Okay, so now that I've given you three different ways that you can use numberless word problems with your students in upper elementary, I wanna leave you with this quick differentiation tip because I know we could all use additional ways to differentiate for our students. After you've used numberless word problems with your students in whatever way you choose to use them, and students have taken the time to understand the problem, they know what's happening, they know the actions, then we can give them numbers to plug into the problem. But we don't have to give every student the same set of numbers. In fact, we can give students choices. We can give them different pairs and they can plug in different pairs of numbers into the problem based on their level of understanding. And so I love using this strategy with students. It actually came from a CGI book that I read years ago. And what they did is they were very strategic to choose sets of numbers that kind of aligned to different phases in the learning progression. So a student who is early on, who is really relying on models to solve this problem, you may choose numbers that are smaller or just more appropriate to be modeled, whereas the most challenging pair of numbers, it may be bigger numbers, ones that you wouldn't model to solve. It requires a more sophisticated strategy or approach. And so we give students those pairs of numbers and give them choice in choosing the pair of numbers that works best for them. So now you have every single student working on the same problem and you can have a discussion about the problem together, but they're working on different pairs of numbers. And in that discussion, you can compare different strategies and see how they connect to one another. It's actually a brilliant technique. So I'm so thankful for the authors of that CGI book who, um, who shared that. It is a strategy I have used with students so many times. So there you have it. There's a quick rundown on numberless word problems. If you have any questions about using them, be sure to leave me a question in the comments and I will be sure to get back to you. Also, check out the description because I have got a link to that problem solving freebie I talked to you about. It's actually a word problem sort that you can use with your students. It is free, so make sure you click on that link and get it. I will also link to several other numberless word problem resources that I have for you, including the CGI book, which isn't specifically about numberless word problems, but that is where that differentiation technique came from. And I also have some numberless word problems already pre-made that are, some are one step, some are multi-step, and there is a template that is so very helpful for students and kind of guiding their thinking through that problem solving process. So all of that is linked in the description. If this video was helpful for you, I would love if you gave it a thumbs up, if you would subscribe so that way you do not miss next week's video. If you have number pluckers in your classroom too, which I'm sure you do, I hope you will try this strategy and I cannot wait to talk math with you again soon.